of September 2016, and I'm here with Arnon. And um, Arnon is um, an amazing astrologer, uh, and we have been recording up to date uh, this morning an introductory session on the zodiac, and uh, we'll put that up as a separate uh, internet recording. And uh, we're now just going to explore aspects of a being that we'll call Brabus for the moment. Right, yeah. Um, the right. time was 1... 1.13am. 13 13. By dowsing, um, I was born at 1.13am on the 21st of June, what 1948. Tell me what you see. Still looking. Okay. Oh, <laughs> mm. okay. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like this. Can I come round and record the chart? Yeah, please. I'll do. come round behind you. Yeah, yeah. One moment. Here we come. He's one of my rarest. Are uh, you one of my rarest? <laughs> uh, these guys. Do you see this? Neptune is sitting between, almost between the fires here, completely. Yeah, yeah. He's one of the ones I've been trying to find for a long time. Uh, it only happens every uh, 42 years yeah. for a couple of, uh, maybe 14 months, that a child can be born with, uh, with that there. Okay. So it only happens very rarely. What does that mean? What is oh, that motivated mean? by the illusion. Motivated uh, by what? The illusion. And, the illusion. Dream. and dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the uh, other guys that I've met with this, I've only actually met guys actually as well, um, have all had something to do with uh, the movie industry and uh, film editing and uh, creating uh, dream weavers, sort of. Um, they live out. Uh, Neptune is beyond. Our world. I've got to explain the planets to you. That's fun. Um, yeah, but if you're looking at our world, you get all the way out to Uranus, and Uranus is the face of our world, the belief. What everyone has to believe in because they can't see it with the naked eye, because it's the one that's just beyond Saturn. You know, like we can see as far as Saturn. Uranus. Well, we just got to believe it's out there. Yeah. Or use a telescope. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and Neptune, well, that's well after that. Mm -hmm. And so it's outside of our life. Mm -hmm. And it represents everything outside of what can be found on, in our yeah. solar system. Yeah. So when you're motivated mm -hmm. in that white zone, mm -hmm. I call that where your motivation comes from. And can that also be like um, creating ideas and different ways of doing things and if you're motivated by something you're going to focus a lot of your life towards it because yeah. you're going to be looking at it all the time yeah, yeah. and when you're looking at Neptune you're looking at something so intangible so far away yeah. that not many people get the chance to see it unless you create it for them uh, which is what you get Neptune motivated people throughout that actually makes you my uh, an antagonist to me huh. that'll be interesting <laughs> It's all right. I get on well. Um, yeah, antagonism, right. uh, 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 yeah, when you're looking at the relationships between people, it's very hard to be antagonized by a butterfly anyway. Oh, uh, what's that? Uh, yeah, this is a butterfly, okay, this nice. shape here. Yeah. Uh, you don't, um, you're quite personable, you know, the uh, our butterflies. Mm -hmm. This is uh, a very old soul and I should be far more respectful, oh, sorry. 75 uh, years. Yes, yeah, soul age is uh, Aquarian soul. This is a life dedicated to saving the planet, um, making, looking to the future and uh, making a difference to make a better world. Um, the, the gifts that an Aquarian soul has is the ability to talk to absolutely anyone and relate. You're, you're the one I call ageless, no matter how old you are, it doesn't matter. You're always the same person. From 7 to 77, you are the same person. Yeah, so, yeah, this... Um, a little bit about the soul age of yours. Uh, what else can I tell you about the soul age of yours? Lots of things. What's um, your soul age? Soul age? I'm young and I'm only a uh, Leo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that green dot, yep. you know, it goes right round the wheel. It starts mm -hmm. off in this house here, the mm -hmm. first house. That's the Aries house. Mm -hmm. 
and runs right way round. Yep. Yep. And it's just about to enter the Piscean. It's a very mm -hmm. late stage mm -hmm. uh, of Aquarian. the uh, Aquarian house. Okay. Uh, this is somebody who's got most of the plan. Mm. <laughs> a lot of mm. uh, a lot of stuff mm. and been around for a really long time. Mm. Chronological age. Uh, or at least 1800 years uh, a long time on the planet mm. Mm. Uh, yeah many lives many lives before mm. but living this one as a butterfly <clears throat> this is I uh, don't see the butterfly Can you uh, well normally you'd expect to only have two sticks oh, right. if a butterfly right. but this shape can have mm -hmm. uh, a segment yep. or it can have a stick right. this is the shape of the mind and yours is all segments it's three of them right um these are fun mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay there's there are elements about a butterfly um you're going to be not following the the archetype of a butterfly at all really because you're such an old soul but uh for an old soul to be using a butterfly see if uh if you were one of these younger guys like even me this shape would have been something that's changing you but in your stage because of being an old soul you're using this shape to get what you want ah. uh, so um, as butterflies ah. go this is a very special butterfly because uh, the Aquarians get designed and built to be who they are uh, yeah so what you've got is three thought patterns you need two of them to have a conversation and uh, that'll that'll get you into a position where you can chat with somebody else. If you only had one piece of, yeah, I'd call you single-minded, a monologist, uh, you know, a person that just says the, what they have to say and waits until they can say it again. Uh, you've got, as a butterfly, uh, a butterfly is a seasonal creature. So when they start a job, they want to be able to see the end of the job. Uh, if there's no end to it, uh, it, it, it's like clipping their wings uh, they're stuck and they uh, can become damaged by the fact that they don't have their freedom uh, because one thing you cannot take away from a butterfly is their freedom they have to be able to do what they want when they want to do it they want to be in nice places not horrible places if the scene becomes all nasty and horrible they go somewhere where it's nice um, in a party a butterfly is oh the duty the like no matter who has the shape of a butterfly there's only one purpose that comes with that shape normally you've obviously using it with some other purpose in mind as well but normally a butterfly is there just to make the place better um yeah. if you have a garden it's pretty you put a butterfly in it it's even better mm. uh if you're at a party the butterfly makes the party better for everyone it's just more enjoyable mm -hmm. the purpose the butterfly has is just to make it all better for everyone else okay um <laughs> you little butterfly you <laughs> well this is a distracted <laughs> butterfly a distracted butterfly yeah. yes he was just um, saying that this morning weren't you lots of ideas and lots of things but it doesn't often a, get it um to get a process occurring in a natural state you need two pieces of thought you got three so you've always got another one on the boil yeah that's it and yeah i don't know about one hundred. yeah <laughs> actually i call this a bit of ocd uh distraction yeah, yeah, yeah. uh that's the shape mm. you'll find the most true but at your age you you could actually have a whole lot of things on the go uh, but uh, if a young soul had that they are ocd you know they um, they can't sit there for very long you don't try and talk to them for very long they need to go off and do something else. If they're sitting there, they will be fiddling mm. to maintain that third thought pattern. You know, the best mm. way to hold their attention is to give them chewing gum, you know, let them chew on that, or let them play with their hair, or doodle. play with a pencil, you know, doodle. Yeah. yeah, then you've got their attention. Tell yeah. them to stop that, yeah. and you'll lose their attention. It'll happen a little bit with you as well. Um, mm. Yeah, the best way to maintain to attention. Garden. Yeah, it's to have something little that you're doing at the same time yeah. to distract. Cool. Um, ruled by responsibility to an overly, yeah. overly dramatic level. Yeah. What happens when it gets that loud is you will not do it. Oh, yes. It's so much responsibility you couldn't take it. 
and um, yes. normally Jupiter in the mind. See the yellow zone, that's all happening in the mind. And this mind, <laughs> where you've got Jupiter way off the scale too loud, and the moon off the scale, the moon doesn't have a voice. Jupiter's too loud and you'll be ignoring it, which leaves your mind completely and utterly empty. It's clear. There's nothing there except for there's the, um, well, the bloody voice that won't shut up that's responsibility, uh, pushing you to be responsible for all life and, uh, and anything to do with life. Jupiter is where all life comes from and all power comes from. Uh, so anything living, you feel responsible. Yeah, except that the level of responsibility is too high. So, I mean, if you, for example, you had kids, mm -hmm. you would have uh, uh, had a uh, high l stress level related to them. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that's about the most responsibility a person can get. And somebody who's that stupidly seriously responsible would be painfully hurt by it. It would have been a really difficult thing. Yeah, I hardly have anything to do with them now. But that's yeah, just because I'll, the I'll, amount... I'll, yeah, I'll let them go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. which would have been, the whole thing would have been really very difficult because mm -hmm. the amount of effort you were prepared to put into making it right, mm -hmm. uh, it was beyond humanly possible. Yeah, it was misdirected effort that, um, in, in a sense in that it was um, work my guts out to put them through university yeah. or school and the very best schools and the university and all yeah. that sort of stuff. It was something that you shouldn't have been asked of anyone at that level, at that volume. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. The, this one is a bit more fun because, I mean, it's a bit loud, uh, very loud, but it's uh, instinct. It's the feeling. It's the sensation, touch, taste, sight, sound, that sort of thing going on. This is... Uh, being led by things that don't have voices. Um, and being in the moment, being led by the moment, they are uh, being absolutely present. The moon is all about what is occurring at, at the specific moment. Is it sitting up there? Oh, it's here, look here, it's sitting in here, in this ninth house here. Moon sitting in there, that means I just do my moment the way I do my moment. Nobody else does their moment like it. <laughs> Um, Does that make sense to you, darling? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's one person you'll really push around. Yes. <laughs> it's, this is you, actually. Um, you're your own slave. He is. Yeah, you'll kick yourself around a lot and uh, probably not many anyone else. <laughs> um, these, uh, this is your world. You've got a highly active world, uh, the green zone here. Uh, so the, the thing that you've got the most control over is uh, making you do things. Uh, the next one is probably over here with Uranus. Now, this is a fun one because that's belief. Now, it can happen in funny ways. If you have been uh, Uranus up here in the mind, this means you are a believer. You have to believe in a greater power that controls you. Okay, but when you put it down here, I can use belief and control belief, and I can manipulate belief and make it my world. Uh, if it's in this green zone, you're gonna use it. It's something practical and tangible, and it's gonna mm. be a physically do you thing. But the novelty about this is <laughs> the true believer is the one with the Uranus at the top. The one that can actually use it is basically in the non-believer position because they have power over the belief, the way, the ability to manipulate. And if you uh, can actually manipulate and change something you can believe, well, uh, how can you believe it? <laughs> it's a contradiction. It's a game. It's a game, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's the power of um, uh, controlling understanding. That's what that is. Um, it's also an indicator of somebody who is going to live life on a lighter side. They have to. Um, I've seen people kill themselves with that uh, mm. because mm. they take themselves too seriously. Mm. Mm. 
um, they suddenly think they've got you know like the answer to the ultimate question or whatever, and they become super serious, mm. and they suddenly start getting ill. Mm. Well, uh, uh, it has uh, been there. Yeah, I've uh, been there, but I've come back. Yeah, the, I, that'll kill you. It's the serious yeah. belief that'll yeah. kill you. Yeah. The yeah. fact that you know how to manipulate and control belief actually heals you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's when I watch, and I'd love to say, you know, like, don't, oh, hey, don't do, don't no. do that, and yep. they yep. do that anyway. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not yeah. that you're. It's not a dis, you know, um, uh, a bad thing to say no. that you no, can manipulate and control yep. belief. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Um, I but think that's a good thing. Yeah. You you are the one who has the power I over it. With wisdom, yeah. that's fine. Over his thoughts, over his beliefs, his yeah. thinking, and then he can change. It's you world. first, belief second. Yeah. And the other way around makes you the bl uh, basically up there puts you into the position of being a blind believer. Right. Mm. And, uh, having blind faith in something, which is something you don't respect at all. No, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Been there, done that, <clears throat> and I've had it shattered enough yeah. times to know that. Uh, blind faith is a dangerous thing. And, it's not worth And I see the, the great majority of the world with blind faith. Mm. The great, great majority of us. Oh, wow. Oh, there's some crazy numbers in here, man. There are some really cool numbers going on. <laughs> um, okay, so what else we got going on here? Uh, we were looking down here in your world. So this belief is going to be a serious part of your world, uh, which you put a lot of hard graft into. The deeper... Well, that's what I'm doing here right now. <laughs> yeah. I had, I, Can you see that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So I've just been having conversations in the past few weeks. I've made um, mm. four recordings of nearly two hours each with um, Divine Source. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. So chatting. So we've recorded that and Divine Source wants them put up on the internet. Um, and anyway, we'll go on. We'll reveal other aspects later on, but I want to hear what mm. you see. There you go. Yeah, Uranus is actually the slave in this chart. So that would make it your world completely. It's the one you have the most control over, and that is belief. Uranus is all about something you have to believe in because you can't quite see it yet. It's that just out of range. Um, <laughs> having uh, Mercury and Venus down here, I have this as well. I find it very practical. Um, it's control over time and control over tradition. You know, if there's something traditional, I'll do it a different way. Thank you very much. I don't need to do it your way. I know it's a proven technique, but there must be others. I relate very well with that. I don't yeah. know about control over time. Um, you will have the ability to get more done in a shorter period of time than other people would be able to. Uh, you can lose time faster than other people can. Right. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it just depends on how you... Yep. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, the method, Saturn, is a solid skill. Uh, so procedure and methods, you can find a quality one, a quite a decent direction of doing it, and you don't need somebody else to tell you how. You know, you'll be able to see many different approaches to a subject mm. and uh, devise a method that will get the thing done uh, very well. Mm. Um, you're looking further up here and you've got Mars sitting uh, as just under motivation and it's just in this little butter zone here which is um, basically control over your own uh, personality and ego. Um, so this is somebody who will use who they are as part of the skill they have. You're, you, um, you're not going to sit out the back. You're, um, oh, look at that. This shows uh, Mars phase. I'm going to describe Mars phase. But, okay, this is somebody who's got the ability to be up the front and present and has control over their personality and can do the right things at the right times. Yep. But this here is indicating somebody who spends most of the time completely at the back of the room watching from the behind. Hmm. Being the observer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, this guy's. Yeah, I can get up on stage and talk to five hundred people, and I can do, I can do radio shows and television shows, and yeah. Then he can stay. Yeah. And well, these, weeks on <laughs> these ones here, the, um, the, these are the phases. This is something popular astrologies sort of dipped out on lately. They're quite handy to know these, 
because um, the moon goes from a phase, you know, from full to new. Mm. Uh, uh, and I can turn that phase into a sign. Oh, okay. Uh, because any cycle, mm. uh, if you watch it, you can put it into the zodiac. <laughs> a moon phase is a cycle. Mm. So you can look here and it's almost full. Mm -hmm. It's in Virgo, so it's still waxing. Mm. When it hits Libra, it, it starts to wane again and then uh, goes back down. So this is almost full. 99%. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So. Mm. The next three days would have been full moon days after you were born. Mm. Uh, and this is an emotion, uh, uh, looking at the emotion or the moment of the person with the ability to express an awful lot of emotion and is not going to hold it back. Um, mm. Whereas mm. if you push this sign through to 99 Libra, which the moon is waning again, this person has an incredibly large amount of motion and will hide it as much as possible and won't let it out. Mm. And they're the ones that sort of can go Chernobyl because uh, <laughs> too, much, too much, too much energy being created yeah. and no way of getting it out. And yeah. cancer. Yep. Yeah. 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 So you. I mean, physical cancer. Yeah. Yeah. You can come out and yes, mm. definitely in all sorts mm. of ways. Mm. Um, Mercury goes from full to new. Uh, so it goes through all of the phases. Yours is in Pisces. This is the mind and how it works and how it, what drives it. Uh, yours is classic. This is quite a rare one. Pisces is half in the dreaming and half in the real world. It's not uh, strictly tangible stuff or definable stuff. So well, a lot of the stuff that will go through your mind is something you could never express to anyone else. It doesn't actually turn into words. You'll be able to turn pieces of it into something that sounds a bit like what it is into words, yep. but not what it is. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, basically, the alien mind. <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get more into astrology now. The, the Venus factor is, uh, this is a uh, black Venus almost, it's a zero phase and it's just at the last stages of the last stages of the last stages of the zodiac, oh, Pisces. Okay. Uh, this is um, a heart in the dreaming, mm. even deeper than the mind. <laughs> so this, uh, as it goes, the deeper, the higher that number gets, if it gets up to like 99, mm. like mine is at 99, 99.4. Mm. It shows the depth you live into the lives of others. Yeah. And I mean, I live thoroughly, I've been homeless for the last 10 years uh, and I live in somebody's backyard. <laughs> I live in the lives of others utterly. Uh, and even when I was making 180,000 a year, I was living in dongers and in, in hotels. Yeah, these are not private residences or anything of mine. Mm. And I knew already from my own understanding of the chart that that was the only way I could live. Mm. I'd rather do it within the backyard than on a Ptonga. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, anyway, so, but at this level, yeah, this shows almost um, completely living in your own world, separated from everyone else. So quite happy to interact, but unnecessarily you know, to interact, uh, hmm. a recluse possible, um, a hermit possible, hmm. uh, somebody who is completely self-contained. And I mean, the only thing that's actually getting you out of the cave is the fact that you're trying to save the planet at the moment. Hmm. You know, I've often said in, in the past aspects of my life that I could easily become a beach bum if the pressure gets much more. I just chuck the profession, live simplistically, catch my own fish and live as a beach bum in a cave or something. Hmm. and. Hmm. Yeah, Jupiter. down by the ocean or near a stream. If you could let It'll... go of all your stuff, yeah, you could do it. Yeah, mm. I believe I could. Mm, okay. Mm. Mm. But I'm doing it for my purpose. Mm. Double Gemini. Mm. <laughs> That's cool. Sorry, I, uh, for me, <laughs> reading one of these is a bit like information overload. There's loads and loads and loads. I've, I've actually sat there and uh, described a chart for six weeks. 
Yeah. Right, you can, okay. you can yep, get yep. into all sorts of details. Yep, yep. Uh, it's just like, what's, what's, um, it, yeah. yeah, what do you feel like right now? What's, what's just, yeah. yeah, what do you want to share? Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, you got, uh, you can study the person's thought patterns. I was just done, just, just having a gander at yours. Uh, yep. This is, uh, each one of these is, appears as a thought pattern. This little tight one here is the fun one. It's got, it, it's, uh, you've got double Gemini going on with your belief. So, uh, Explain that. uh, that's, this is your Uranus, your slave. This means that, uh, Uranus is sitting in the house of Gemini and in the, uh, sorry, the sign of Gemini and the house of Gemini. They're, they're the same. Right. So you've got like this amazingly uh, inquisitive uh, mind that is going to go into the, all of the most ridiculously odd corners that nobody else has ever been to to find answers that nobody else has even thought were questions. Mm. It's, um, mm. and, and it actually occupies a whole thought pattern right through to how you spend your time. Um, the, the house you find um, Mercury in is going to be how you find the person spending their time a lot. And yours is a Gemini way of spending time. This is somebody who gets into all sorts of different things, um, not really you know, going to persist too long in any one of them, and she's quite easily distracted into something that nobody else has even thought was a subject to study. You know, this is um, very... <laughs> uh, I remember when I bumped into you, I, I, I said I wanted to, I hope you're lateral thinking, I think you're more lateral thinking than I could ever be. <laughs> uh, this one here, this big thought pattern here is very practical though, this, this is your practical world. And you've got a thought pattern that runs right from the uh, skilled trade sort of level through to the teacher. Um, so this, um... Well, he has done all that. He's taught at uh, veterinary science at universities and everything like oh, that. He's all right. A, he's right mm. up there. Mm. Has done in the past. Yeah, because that's an amazingly useful and practical um, piece of thought going mm. on there. And it's the biggest one. Mm. Uh, and then you've got this one up here, which is all personal. Um, it's, uh, this is in the uh, eighth house. Um, this is how you, um, well, it's how you live your moment, which I already described as, you know, like I do whatever I want, the unique and unusual way that I do. And yes, it may be contrary, but uh, <laughs> you wait until you see the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how I'm reading your chart. So. That's it. I think you're very accurate. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I'm relieved, very relieved to meet someone like you. It's, uh, I mean, this is a young town, and I've been spending my time with all of the youngest and youngest of the souls in a very <laughs> unusual atmosphere. Um, I haven't even got to talk to an Aquarian soul for much. And that's unusual because they're usually chatty and you find them quite easily in the town. They're just are smart enough to avoid where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was more concerned about the young ones. Yeah. And I mean, you guys can look after yourselves. I was just trying to... I was, no, I, yeah. I see that, that this town is um, very, very mixed and very polarised and, and very... Um, a lot of pain. Oh, it's immense. A huge amount of pain. You got and people, people <coughs> seeking the easy way out well, and blinding themselves rather than I can seeking the around. deeper answers initially. And yeah. then, they're, then, then, then they get, they get, some of them are getting to the stage of wanting to move beyond the superficial answers to the deeper answers. Oh, there's actually quite a large group of people out here with uh, solid um, reasonings. Mm. And then you've got the superficial crowd in town, mm. yeah, the one that yep. hangs around, that um, are here because they need to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they're the other ones that are... Um, Leo Soul age, my age, uh, I'm attracted to young'uns. Yeah. It's like paying father. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, that's part of what Leo's about, yeah. is being the dad. 
and um, mm. yeah. especially when it comes to soul ages, uh, I will look after the ones that can't look after themselves. My best mate in town's Rodney. Mm. He's 18 months old, soul age. He's the youngest guy in town. Okay. He's firstborn, you know, he demands everything. Um, and he thinks he has the right to it. Mm. And he gets upset at the world all the time because people don't understand him. It's all very firstborn stuff. Yeah. Then you got the characters uh, in town. Mm. Uh, there are all these little Taurian guys that are so superior. They think they have all the answers and nobody yeah. can tell them anything because yeah. they know it better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're Geminis. Interesting. Interesting. Geminis, these are the ones that are there to party and have a good time. Mm. Yeah, they're doing all the drugs and they're just having an amazing time and they look like they're having fun. And you can see in their eyes they're having the most painful life they've ever had. Yeah, and yeah. they're yeah miserable and alone and smiling and laughing at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's that's a, that's the Gemini's, yeah. and I mean the town's full of them. Wow. Yeah, um, but you got there's this. Old